Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with the promised part three, of course, against our chess member, Sathy5. So we were talking about how, you know, we evolved in this middle game. I sort of held Sathy's pawn structure, right? So let us continue. So we left off at this move, queen d3, right? And... When I think about this move, it's sort of, you know, it's not a bad move at all, but at this moment, white should be thinking about a plan, right? Are we supposed to be pushing on the king side? Are we supposed to be, for example, one move could be bishop d3. Let's say if black does nothing for a long time, knight e2. Queen c7, f4, queen d8, knight g3, queen c7. Well, now maybe think about queen h5, h6, and queen h4, queen d8, and one day rook a1, queen c7, one day. White will consider f5, or even something like knight h5, queen d8, and then after something like g4, right? So this would be the long-term plan. Maybe transferring everything over to the king side, right? As I illustrated before with all these arrows, but... Um, Transferring everything to the king side could be a plan, right? Think about plans as like visions. Like even though you're not a political figure, you're making a vision for the game. How are you going to win the game? How are you going to beat your opponent, right? So most things come with a vision. And in this case, um, our chess commander played queen d3, played knight g6, intending to play e5. These are like short-term visions, and after something like a4, I played e5. And at this point, I started thinking about a plan, because at this point, I realized it's time to expand, play f4, play e4, get the bishop out, get the rook out this way. That was my plan. And after b3, e4, queen h3, hung the queen, that's okay, played king h8. Gave our chess club member a chance. After queen g3, I refused to trade because I'm attacking, right? This queen's going to help out with the attack, so I'll save the queen for now. Rook b1. I love that pawn. I'll take one. Pleases me. Helps achieve my plan much easier. So after queen e3, kept my queen. After rook d1, I started advancing. b4. Now, you notice that Sethi is putting together a plan, and that's good, but in this scenario, it might be a little late. So after f4, queen d4, queen g5, g3, I start taking, I put the bishop here, control this square, don't let a rook to come on. Our Sethi 5 decides to sacrifice it, I say, okay, let's take Rook takes, trades, and after the move, knight e5, I'm going to bring it into f3, check ruski, check ruski, and after knight e2, let me just get that, knight f4, let me just take that, what a strong pin, and another pin, and a piece, and the lawnmower, so, of course, what is the, what is, what is, how did I win, right? You might think, why, why did the game go down so quickly? And I guess the first slip up was the move e5, right? Not counting the number of defenders and the attackers. So every time it is important, you count up the number of attackers, the number of defenders. So you see that black has two pieces, white only has one. Therefore, black is going to get the pawn. So, after this, I would say what really made my game much easier 
was I had a direction in the game, right? I sort of knew that I was going to push this side. And you could see that our chess club member, Sethi, sort of took a while to find the plan that was there. And especially with those extra pawns, it really helped me out a lot more with my plan, right? And I guess those two things are what's most important in this game that allowed me to win. But I can tell you about some other ways to think about it. So for example, let's look back. Let's just look at a random game, right? So in this game, I am playing a person named just kid well let me just go to it um so in this game so let's skip over the opening and all of that so my plan is simple it's reckless but i want to attack on the king side right so after this middle game i castle so now it's sort of the middle game Right, so what is my plan here? My plan is to push these guys. Win this pawn, it's as simple as that. G5, I win the pawn, and after rook c8, I play something like bishop h3. Very hard move to find because it's a very odd square to develop to, right? You'll never see the bishop on the side of the board. But in this case, it's sort of it sort of skewers the bishop and the rook. And after queen e8, bishop g4, attack the knight. Queen a4, knight c3 was a little bit of a mistake. Turns out I had this move, apparently. I just realized that that might have been the better move. Because after bishop takes, f takes, knight check, whatever. That's not what I was covering, but just a discovery for myself. So after this very dangerous sacrifice, mm, yeah, I guess this isn't the best game to cover a sort of, let's see, let's look at my archive games. Mm. Okay, let's, let's look at another one of these games. So let's look at this game. This game was another one of those g4, h4, and yeah, this sort of dwindled quickly as well. But let me let me tell you what I mean by planning. So let's look at a board, right? So for example, I'm going to go on to live chess. I'm going to show you something on this board, right? So after e4 e5. Hmm, very weird. Okay, let's just, um, where is it? Analysis. All right. So, after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, this is what is called the Spanish opening. And I'm going to show you what I mean by a middle game plan. So, after something like a6, let's skip over the opening because even though the opening might be important, it's not as important as executing a plan. So after castles, c3, d6, h3, right? So preventing the bishop from coming here because this knight is good, this bishop is bad. So after something like knight a5, bishop c2, c5, d4. Now we reach the middle game. Now, what is white and black's plan? Um, so first of all, white wants to play the moves knight here, knight here, knight here, knight here, knight here. So, for example, after queen c7, white plays d5, and then after something like knight b7, or let's say knight d7, bring the knight over, 
White's going to play knight d2. After c4, bring the knight up. White plays knight f1. Knight b7. And after something like knight g3, knight b6. So in this case, black is trying to go for this a5, a this b4 expansion. What is white going to do? Well, let's look at this. After bishop d7, well, after something like bishop e3, a5, right? And you sort of have to wonder, how am I going to achieve this knight on f5 setup, right? And let's think about it this way. So after knight d2, let's say black plays something like knight c5, white is going to play something like queen f3. And at this point, you might think, where's the plan for white, right? Where is white going with this? And the goal is to put the knight on f5, right? So for example, play the move b4. Then I'm going to play the move knight f5. And let's say after bishop takes f5, because this knight is very powerful, the bishop is bad here. Bishop takes f5. You could play e takes f5, bring the knight out this way. But I'm going to play queen takes f5. Say something like rook a e8. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this other knight to the same square. So I'm going to play queen g4, rook a knight f1, rook e8, knight g3. Rook b8, knight f5. And so it's this gradual planning that you have a goal to obtain, right? So I guess there are two main plans in the what is called Spanish defense. One, you make the center work. You pressure the center. You pressure black's center. The second objective is one of the more you know, strategic objectives. But developing a plan and knowing what your opponent is going to do is important, right? So I guess the first step, you should always look at a position and say, where are my pieces going to be placed the best, right? Where are they going to be the most optimally placed so that they have the most function? And of course, these two knights, they would love to hop on this square. They would love to hop on this square. Think about it like this. Knight h2, queen f3, knight f5, knight g4. So for example, um, after knight b6, you could also think of it like this. Knight h2, knight c5, queen f3, bishop d7, bishop e3, rook c8. Well, let's say black wanted to execute this plan, right? White plays knight g4, and after b4, white plays knight f5. And it's sort of like white is building this strategic setup on the king side. Black is sort of trying to break through on the queen side. And really, it's this sort of small planning that will go a long way. But try to remember that it has to be effective, right? First of all, when you design a plan, there's got to be an end goal in mind, right? And so if you don't have an end goal, it's basically not going to be an effective plan. So that's what it makes it hard, is that your plan should be able to um, outthink your opponent's plan. And it's not easy, but it's doable. And that's why people win games, but... Some people win games based on people making mistakes, but if you don't make mistakes necessarily, you'll win the game if you have a better plan. And so hopefully that brought you some joy in thinking about the middle game. Um, just let me know if you have any other questions on how to improve. I could continue to show you my way of analyzing games. Thank you very much.